Okay, so I'm going to illustrate uh, a method that uh, caused quite a serious uh, vulnerability with inside Windows 10 and shows you that you really need to check uh, the parameters that are being generated with inside uh, uh, crypt your cryptography operations. So we'll start from uh, some, some uh, basics uh, here. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to explain uh, how RSA actually works with an example, and then I'll show you the vulnerability and and how it uh, occurs. Okay, so in uh, RSA, we start off with a message. Okay, we'll make that ten, and then we generate two prime numbers. So we'll make the prime numbers thirteen, lucky for some, and, and seven. From that, we work out what the modulus, the public modulus is as P times Q. And in most cases, it's not possible to be able to find P and Q from the value of N. We then work out a value of phi, and phi is equal to P minus one times Q minus one. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll just print out the value of N here. And we'll print out the value of phi, just to show us what we have. There, phi. Okay, so that's the values. We'll just check what those are, just to see if everything's okay. 91, 72. Okay. So then we pick a value of our encryption key E, and we'll pick a value of phi. So the cipher then becomes uh, m to the power of E mod n okay and again we'll just print that value out there just to show what our cipher is there and that's fine now okay so that's our cipher then what we need to do is work out the value of d so d d times e mod phi is equal to one that's how RSA actually works so we perform that operation by uh, doing what's called an inverse mod. So uh, I use uh, libnum. So from libnum import inverse mod. Good. So d is equal to the inverse mod of e mod phi. Okay, e to the minus 1 mod uh, 5 will give us the value of d. So then it's quite easy now for us to decrypt because we'll take the power of our cipher to the power of d mod n again. And then we'll just print out the value of the plane. And hopefully we'll get back the value here of our original uh, message here. Okay, so does that work? That worked perfectly. Okay, but looks what happens when I now change that to, if I change that now to 11. Now I get an exception caused on line 22, which is this line here. And the reason for that is that e and phi share a factor. Phi is 60, e is 5. They share the factor of 5. So let's say that we want to ignore that and catch the exception. And we print out danger. Look what we can do. We can set D equal to E. Now let's see if we can decrypt this. And, and it works. And the reason is that uh, if P minus 1 shares a factor with E or Q minus 1, then we will get this exception and we will generate a weak uh, set of encryption keys. D is the decryption key, the private key along with n and the public key is e and n but we can see here that if we know e 
that's public, we can easily reverse the cipher. So in this case, uh, we actually find out that the probability is 2 upon e. So we have a 1 in e chance that we will share, and a 1 in e, e chance we will, we will have a factor with that one. So the overall probability is 2 divided by e. If we take a, a normal factor uh, of e, it's 6, 5, 3, 6, 5, 5, 3, 7. So the probability is 2 divided by this value. So it's roughly 1 in about 30k or so will generate uh, a weak set of encryption keys. And this happened with one of the first versions of uh, Windows 10 where Microsoft didn't check for the exception and the keys that were generated were actually uh, weak. So how could we check for that? Well, it'd be quite easy, of course, because all we have to do is to be able to say if uh, phi mod e is equal to zero, that means the share of factor and print. keys and we'd go back and we'd try another set of random prime numbers and make sure that that, that actually worked okay so it's rule one almost of RSA is that you make sure that phi does not share any factors is defined as co-prime with uh, e Okay.